So the problem with Fukushima now is that there are three meltdowns. Hydrogen is still collecting in each of the reactors, so they're having in to inject nitrogen in to dilute the hydrogen so there won't be any more hydrogen explosions. They don't know how to get rid of this, these melted cores, they're called corium, because they melted through six inches of steel onto the containment floor, and they're still producing hydrogen. It's going to go on for, I don't know. They've never had a situation like 40 years. They'll never get into clean up so radioactive, and then nobody can. They sent a computer in there, you know, a robot the other day that died because it's so radioactive in that area. Then building four, um, they've just taken out all the spent fuel at building four just before the earthquake, serendipitously, and they put it on the roof of the reactor in the, in the cooling pool. So here's a building four. Damaged terribly by the earthquake, its walls are sort of going like that. Here's a cooling pool containing 50, um, 100, about 150 tons of the most radioactive material you can imagine because it's fresh from the reactor. If it's an earthquake greater than seven on the Richter scale, it's predicted the building will collapse and they're keeping cooling water going. The, the pool will fall, there'll be no more water and the thing will burn releasing 10 times more radiation than was released at Chernobyl. The Japanese politicians are talking about <coughs> evacuating Tokyo at 35 million people, should that occur. It's going to take them two years to reinforce the building enough to put a huge crane up here to lift the fuel rods out by remote control and put them in, I don't know, dry car, I don't know what they're going to do with them. Meanwhile, the whole northern hemisphere is threatened by this, 10 times more than at Chernobyl. My kids live in Boston. I'm going to get them out and send them to Australia because the two air masses don't mix at the equator. So you're the ones who are going to get it. The international community is saying nothing about it. You all should be in there helping them. You know, this is a, a, a global catastrophe. But so we're sitting on this just waiting for it to happen. And every day there are more earthquakes there, little ones. But you know, get a big one, Bob's your uncle. That's what we say in Australia when something's inevitable. So that's Fukushima. Now, okay, so you've got 104 reactors in your country. I think they closed one down the other day. Uh, 23 are of the uh, Fukushima design. So what are you gonna do about them? Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Close it, no, not just Vermont Yankee, no, all of them. They are medically so dangerous because you could have an accident, I read the report, uh, independent report commissioned by the Japanese parliament, collusion, corruption, the like, and I thought this could apply just as easily to America. The NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, comes from the nuclear industry. It's the fox guarding the chicken coop. It's the Dracula guarding the, the blood bank. You've been lied to consistently. You could easily have an accident like this with global warming, the ocean levels rising, catastrophic storms, all the reactors on the east coast were closed down with Hurricane Sandy. So it floods a control room, bang, you've got a meltdown. The river's levels are falling because of droughts. There's not enough water to cool them. The river temperatures are going up. It's, it's not cool enough to cool the reactors. Human catastrophes, hurricanes, where the, you lose your external electricity supply. What about a big solar flare? It'll knock out all your electricity supply in America. How many meltdowns will you have then? and they're predicting a solar flare quite soon. I don't know how to mobilize Americans, because I sort of say this, and I know some of you have got horror written on your faces, but others are sort of, well, what can I do? <laughs> and people say, well, what can I do? Like, open your mouth, baby, here's your pack, I'll feed you. <laughs> you know, no one has ever told me what to do, because I know medically what this means. And what I haven't finished with is radioactive waste. You have here 60 or about 60, 69,000 tons of incredibly radioactive waste from your civilian reactors and about the same from the, all the bombs you've made at Hanford and Savannah River. There's nowhere to put it. They were going to put it in Yucca Mountain, which is made of basalt, no, pumice. Do you know what pumice is? It's the stuff you use, mum used to use it to get the nicotine stains off her hands, which she smoked, but it's, it's a, dust from volcanoes. I wanted to put it there over an aquifer that supplies Las Vegas. 
So Harry Reid, he comes from Nevada, and Harry Reid said, no way. So you've got nowhere to put radioactive waste, and the EPA says it must be stored isolated from the environment for one million years. <laughs> and I've been saying to the nuclear industry forever, what are you going to do with the waste? And they say, don't worry, we're scientists, we'll work it out. And that's like me saying to a patient, you've got pancreatic carcinoma, you'll probably die in six months, but don't worry, I'm a good doctor. In 20 years, I'll find the cure. This is the legacy we leave to our descendants. These kids, by orders of magnitude, in the grass, the milk, the meat, and then in humans. And you can imagine generations hence, people waking up, Roll their two. babies already being born deformed, the bell at breast milk already radioactive, children getting cancer at the age of six instead of 60 because they're exposed to radiation in utero. That's for the rest of time. This is a scenario that is absolutely horrendous from a medical perspective. And the medical dictum says, if you have an incurable disease, you must prevent it. <coughs> Most cancers are incurable, we must prevent it. What to do with that? I don't know. Nobody knows. It's a wonderful film called Eternity, made by Michael Maston, who's Danish, I think. And Finland's building a deep pit into a granite thing to put the radioactive waste in, but it won't do any good over time. It's the most profound philosophical film I've ever seen. And I interviewed him on my radio program, Infinity. And the Department of Energy is employing anthropologists to work out what science to put on radioactive waste dumps. So, you know, people generations hence. Jesus didn't even speak English, and he only lived 2,000 years ago. I mean, we're mad. We are nuts. And the people involved in the nuclear industry are sociopaths. <laughs> You've got to work out how to get on television, put doctors on television. Here's one. Former head of the AMA. I mean, like this. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, get on television and explain to people medically what it means. So Mrs. Jo Sixpack out there with all the kids, she knows. And that's what we did during the nuclear weapons freeze when I came here in 78. Almost every American said to me, well, it's better to be dead than red. And I said, what? Yeah, we don't want to be communists. I mean, it was a psychotic nation. And I said, well, you'd rather be blown up in a nuclear war? Yeah. So I organized 23,000 doctors, and we started telling people what happens if a bomb drops on Boston. Like, after five miles, everyone's vaporized. It comes in at 20 times the speed of sound, half an hour from Russia to you or vice versa. So you've got a thousand weapons targeting Russia now and a thousand targeting on <coughs> Russia's side. You, there are 10 H-bombs right now targeted on New York, 16 on Washington, D.C., same in Moscow. And they talk about terrorists. Who are the real terrorists in the world? then? mad, these people. And America and Russia are now best friends. We trade, they're capitalists, you know. Well, we believe in capitalism, do we? I don't. But anyway, because Jesus was a socialist, <laughs> leave everything and follow me, you know? So anyway, why are they still planning to blow each other up? Well, that's why I call my book Missile Envy, a la Freud. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a deep psychological significance in these, those girls in, the, in these weapons. You know, if you watch a missile come up, the few big balls of fire at the bottom, you know, it just looks like that. <laughs> And an anthropologist interviewed the weapons makers, and the man who designs the bomb sleeps with the bomb in the desert alone the night before the test. And he talks about labor pains, talks about needing to push. And after the bomb explodes, he talks about postnatal depression. So he's comparing annihilation to birth. You know, and this is very fascinating to me from a psychological point of view, because the cause of all this all of this is psychological. It's not the number of bombs we can count them until the cows come home. What are the dynamics, mostly in the male brain, that stimulate this sort of aberrant, deviant thinking? So I want to write a book called Why Men Kill and Why Women Let Them. And it's generic, you know, it's not applied to any man in the audience, but generally, why? It involves Jungian archetypes and glorification of war. I mean, murder in this country is, is a criminal thing. You go to jail, you might get electrocuted in an electric chair, but your country's totally involved in killing. You spend a trillion dollars a year on killing. A trillion. A trillion. 
And where does your money go? Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Brain, um, Raytheon. You have socialized killing and you have capitalistic medicine where in Australia, medical care is free. Free, go to hospital, you um, have the best orthopedic surgeon in Sydney, anesthetics, you stay in six days, free. That's called civilization. And it's time Americans rose up and said, we will not have guns anymore. Second Amendment is rhubarb, because it was developed, what, 300 years ago? A militia, your militia is a pentagon. You've got a militia. What's more, it goes all over the world and kills people all over the world, you know, like a million people in Iraq, half of whom were children. So I could go on and on. But the threat of nuclear war is ever present every day and every night. And we've come close to nuclear war so many times with computer errors or a flock of geese has set off the computer. Kids are hacking into the early warning system now. I don't honestly know how we're still here. And when I look at the data, as you do with a patient and collect the history, and then you make a prognosis, I don't know how we're still here. So you can get rid of nuclear weapons because Obama, I do think, wants to. He said, but I need your help because you can't do it alone. The Pentagon's very powerful and they're all into missile envy. It's funny when I wrote that book, the generals hated it, but on every bookshelf in the Pentagon, there was a copy of my book. Because <laughs> they knew it to be true. So he needs your help. Russia's ready to abolish nuclear weapons. Yeah, what about Israel? Third largest arsenal in the world. That you don't have any moral, moral authority unless you abolish nuclear weapons yourself. Because you've led the arms race of every step of the way <coughs> except one and Russia stupidly, stupidly copied and followed. You know now you're selling reactors to the United Arab Emirates. They'll make they'll make bombs out of their plutonium. Why shouldn't they? See not the moat in the other person's eye, look instead to the moat in your own eye. Develop humility. Not just humility, but responsibility to saving life on the planet. Because if there's a nuclear war and all the cities <coughs> in a huge cloud of toxic black smoke will rise up in the stratosphere, circling the earth with a cloud so thick it will block out the sun for 10 years, inducing a short ice age, nuclear winter, and everything and everyone will die. That could happen tonight. So three cures. Renewable energy, you've got it within your power, do it. Stop spending money on that, those damn weapons. Transfer the money from the Pentagon to renewable energy, like now. Two, close down all your reactors, what you do with the waste, God only knows. And three, abolish nuclear weapons. There's the way to fix the threat. Planet.